Hi guys, this video is dedicated to red worms called blood worms. Someone uses them for fishing, someone feeds aquarium fish. We're going to use them for their intended purpose, the way nature intended. Specifically, let's watch this larva turn into a mosquito. We have plenty of blood worms, so we haven't forgotten about our fish. We offered some treats to goldfish and glass perch. More precisely, almost everything went to the Chinese Crucian carp. Transparent fish only managed to get ahead of their neighbor in the aquarium once. So, what do we know about bloodworms? Well, first of all, they live in the silt of ponds, lakes, and small streams overgrown with plants. That's where they find their food. So we armed ourselves with a shovel and a crowbar and pulled out some silt from under the ice. We prepared an aquarium and poured 30 liters of water into it. As soon as we covered the bottom with silt, the water turned into a very dirty swamp. Populate in such water might be, but watch him definitely will not get. So we waited for the water to settle down. Funny, but it took four days and the result is not good. However, it is still possible to observe, so we move on to the settlement of red worms in their new home. In the cold season, the vital activity of living organisms slows down. Blood worms are no exception. In cold water, it goes into anabiosis mode and waits for warm weather to turn into a mosquito. Since it is not hot in our hangar and the installed thermometer shows a little more than 11 degrees Celsius, the red worms behave passively. They move very slowly along the bottom. So we installed an aquarium heater. We will try to recreate summer weather. Hopefully they do not have a built-in calendar and we can see in winter the process of emergence of the mosquito from the larvae. The next day, the glass near the thermometer fogged up and the water temperature warmed up to almost 17 degrees. But the most interesting thing is that the water became clear. Either the larvae had such an effect or the heating of the water. Observation has definitely gotten better. A lot of holes appeared on the bottom. Some of them are still setting up their homes. Here settled a real architect as he beautifully managed to make a house using roots and algae. But the majority of bloodworms preferred to just dig a hole. We decided to add some more bloodworms to our makeshift aquarium. This way, there would be more chances to film the process of mosquito emergence. In warm water, the new batch was very active and burrowed into the silt literally in half an hour. This is what burrowing one bloodworm looks like. In the process of building a house, the larvae use their saliva to glue bits of mud, sand, or vegetation together. The most amazing thing is that this sticky saliva works underwater, and judging by the results, it works well. Some bloodworms go to a lot of trouble for their comfort. They're building really big houses, and all because as larvae, these insects can live for several years. But a mosquito that is born only lives for three, four days. Our larvae didn't wait a few years. On the fifth day after settling in, there wasn't a single mosquito yet. And on the sixth day, when we entered the hangar, we were surprised, to put it mildly. Immediately, seven mosquitoes had time to be born. Of course, the water has warmed up to 20 degrees Celsius, so the mosquitoes had a real summer. There are seven empty cocoons floating on the surface of the water. The process is already good. It remains to witness the birth and record this moment on camera. How amazing nature can be. It is even hard to believe that this mosquito was recently a red worm and lived underwater. And now it's flying and buzzing. By the way, this is not a mosquito that drinks blood. Our mosquito is the ringing mosquito. It got its name because of the characteristic sound, which occurs due to the high frequency of wing beats up to 1,000 per second. In these shots, you see a male. And here is the female. The differences are more than obvious. And the difference is not only in the antennae, the females are larger. By the way, these mosquitoes do not drink blood, but feed mainly on nectar. Therefore, they are absolutely harmless to humans. And so we witnessed the birth. But everything happened so quickly that we didn't have time to take a video. A mosquito finished coming out of its cocoon, made one movement, and flew away. We didn't get a good picture, but we saw it, so we'll know how to proceed. 
The cocoon floats up quite quickly, and the mosquito comes out of it in a few seconds. All it left behind was this shell. And right in front of us, one restless bloodworm came out of its hole. He's quite unusual. The process of metamorphosis is already underway. Can we finally witness a complete transformation? We are patient and wait for this dandelion to float up. It took a couple of hours for this worm to lie still, then became hyperactive. Finally crawled to the corner of the aquarium and settled there. A few more hours of observation did not yield any interesting shots. Therefore, I decided to postpone the shooting to the next day. I made myself a cuppa, sat down in front of the mosquito terrarium and have no intention of leaving until I get enough interesting shots. Let's start perhaps with yesterday's bloodworm. At once it seemed to us that it could not have been born and died, but soon it moved again. Either the transformation process is taking longer than we thought, or it's been delayed in a particular individual. Overnight, three more dandelions appeared in the tank. The first one. The second one is passive. And the third was the most active of them all. Sometimes he became so mad, like a bull in a bullfight. Something goes wrong and they come out in such a vulnerable state and become easy prey for the fish. By the way, not one of them could not have been born on this day. During the hours spent in front of the aquarium, we discovered that in addition to the moths, we have quite a large number of underwater inhabitants, most notably the millipedes moving along the bottom. I don't know what it is, I'll call it a crayfish. And next to it swims a very small flea, a type of infusoria. There's another one lurking on the root here, could you find it? There it is. There's a pair of them here. They're trying to find something interesting at the bottom. And on the other side, two of them seem to be breeding. At the same time, two more came to look at the most restless bloodworm, which, by the way, by its movements, dug up a few sleeping brethren. In general, there are a lot of these crustaceans here. There are also some worms here. If it weren't for the movement, it would be difficult to notice them. Here we also found an underwater snail. You can compare, it's not much bigger than a match head. It walks on the glass and collects food on the surface. But the most interesting thing is that after about 20 minutes, the snail started walking on the water, and from the backside, it has literally ridden the surface tension and is picking up floating debris. I never knew snails could do that. And the most striking inhabitant was this champion of camouflage. We looked at it for a long time, but we couldn't figure it out. Is it the shape of his body? Or does the unknown inhabitant hide in a twig and use it as a house? Even a small aquarium with soil collected in a body of water can become an interesting object for observation with its own ecosystem. And now we bring to your attention a selection of mosquito births filmed on this day. It all starts with a larvae floating up. Then a worm like this appears on the surface. As you can see, it is the same dandelion only freed from the red shell. Now it's trying to tear the shell to get out. On average, after surfacing, the mosquito emerges quite quickly in just 20, 30 seconds. Here are some shots of this emergence. Before it emerges, the surfaced cocoon spews ink. The record holder for birth, 9 seconds, managed to capture the very end. One of the larvae wriggled for just over 10 minutes before emerging. He was also quite shy. 
It swam behind the thermometer, emitted ink, and left us without frames. There was also a larva that floundered for over an hour on the surface of the water. On the plus side, we were able to see it from all angles and the unusual body shape with its different segments. And this beautiful dandelion on its head. The only downside is that the mosquito was never born and the larvae drowned. Tough natural selection. And you're naturally left to like and subscribe to our channel. That's all for now. Bye-bye.